This is our sixth year of celebrating White History Month. And I started it, or we started, I started, we started, I take more than one, because I noticed that the haters of God and of America are doing all they can to erase the true history of America. The true history of America. And and only a few, if any at all, only a few, there are a few people who are working to prevent that from happening. Because most people are afraid, they have so much fear due to having anger. They have inner conflict and fear that they are afraid to stand up to the devil, the devil within and the devil without inside of others. They are afraid to face him. And as a result, evil people, and the human heart is evil until it is born again of the Father. Evil people who are children of the devil, they want to erase true history. I remember uh, in the school that I went to down in Sweet Home, Alabama, and I wasn't like a bit, I didn't really like school. I just liked the fun part of school. I didn't like sitting in the classroom and all that. I never liked that. But I, I did it because I had to do it. And I liked the fun part of school. And when I saw Donald Trump there on that, uh, giving that talk about America, it reminded me of some of the school teachers that I had when they would teach about history and how America came about. They, and they were black. The school that I went to were all black. They were black. And it was black until the last year that I was there. They integrated the school thing. But um, the teachers, when they would teach about the 4th of July and how America came about, they did it with such an appreciation and love for the formation of this country. And... It stuck with me, just the appreciation they taught us, the class, about America. And these people were black. They were not enemies of America. They didn't hate God. They didn't hate good. They didn't hate America. They appreciated America. And I want you to know that this was at a time, during a time when Jim Crow existed and all that. And when, when, when black people understood, for the most part, you always had some crazies, I guess, because of good and evil. But uh, at a time, Jim Crow existed and all that. We had to work the plantation and all that. But they had a love and appreciation for the country because they understood that it was a battle between good and evil. And they, they pondered and they wondered what it must have taken for the men, white men, who found it and discovered and created the greatest country on this side of heaven, heaven, what that must have been like for them to create something out of nothing, to create something out of nothing, the hardships and the pain and the uncertainty and the doubts and the arguments, like human beings do argue when they get together, right? Because they disagree, but they kept going. What that must have been like for them. And so when they taught us about the formation of this country and the 4th of July, it was, it was heartfelt. And so that stuck with me and a lot of other blacks who went along from those days. It wasn't like it is today. Black people hating America, no love, no appreciation, and liberal whites and these enemies of ours from other countries who are coming here illegally or overstaying their so-called visa. They don't have any love and appreciation and understanding about the hardship, what it took to, cre to create what was once the greatest country on this side of heaven. That appreciation is gone. 
and now you have enemies who are no good people. It's not like they're making anything better. I can see it if they were making it better. I guess I would be able to see it, but they're not. They're only destroying it and adding to the destruction. And these white men who came here, they were guided by God to create something out of nothing. Out of the darkness of nothing came the United States of America. And we should be grateful. We should be grateful and thankful rather than angry and hateful and evil and try to destroy it. And the thing about it, if you notice, these people who are trying to destroy America, they're not offering up anything that's better. Nothing that's better. And this whole idea of racism and slavery and Jim Crow and, and critical race and equity and all that, it's just mess. It's just evil. And it's unfortunate that the white men of today don't have the same type of fortitude or courage or love to defeat the enemies of America for fear of being called racist or some material thing being taken away from you. It's just unfortunate that white men are not standing up and saying no to the enemies of America. The enemy is within. The enemy is within you because you are your world. You are the world. You are the universe. You are each individual, right? And so you have an enemy within that wants to destroy the world within you. And you have an enemy without that's inside of others that want to destroy, destroy America without. And unfortunately, white men, not just in America, but in Europe and other great places where white people built, they don't have it anymore. Just imagine, they don't have it anymore to continue what the goodness that white men who founded this country had, but they don't have it to say no to, hold on to what we do have. It's crazy, but I understand it. Anyone that has anger has fear. Anyone that has anger is evil. Anyone that has anger is subject to the world. They're, they're in it, but they're in it and, and they're subject to it. They're of it. And they don't see reality. They live in a false illusion of life. Not knowing that God is with them and that God is within. According to the scripture, the human heart, anyone that has anger is a murderer. They're of their father, the devil. According to uh, just a little good history about what the white man did, from military.com, over time, the colonists began to resent being under the thumb, the thumb of Great Britain. They resented being under the thumb of Great Britain. On July 4th, 1776, the colonies claimed their independence. They claimed their independence. An event that eventually led to the formation of of the United States. God bless the United States of America. It, 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 it's just hard to, it's like God gave us a gift. And in the good old days, we call it the greatest gift on this side of heaven. And what do we do? Well, not me. What are most people doing? And taking that gift and giving God the finger. Like, we don't want this. We're going to destroy and create junk from the devil because there is no gray area. Either you're of God or you're of the devil, the spirit of evil. And the people who hate America, the people who are trying to destroy it, are of evil. 
that souls are wicked. This is a day to be grateful, to be thankful to God and to the white men who went through hell to create what was once upon a time called the greatest country on this side of heaven. And again, open your eyes, wake up, and see that the people who are trying to destroy it, they are not offering you anything that's good. Nothing. It's all junk, and it only leads to more destruction. This is why history might. And we are having why history might to remind you of the greatness and what it took to make that so in this country, the United States of America. I was dumbfounded when I saw the military, the police force, the government, so-called leadership, right, of America sitting back licking boots and watching evil Black Lives Matter people and radical liberal white Antifa deliberately tearing down statues, monuments, and flags and burning down buildings Everything that will remind us and generations to come the greatness of America. They sat back and did nothing. Absolute nothing. And they all knew it was a lie. It was a made up lie why they, the people were destroying it. They knew it wasn't going nowhere. They knew it wasn't going to make a change in America for the good. And they sat back and just allowed evil non-grateful children of the devil, children of the lie, to destroy America. I would suggest do what you like and what you want, of course, suffer and die, that you wake up as an individual to see what's happening in my country. Happy Fourth of July for what it's worth. I see nothing but misery in America today. I see men and women waking up, though. A few are are looking at themselves, and they're overcoming. Of all races around the world. But majority are living in hell. Walking dead. Eyes open, but they cannot see. God bless America, and God bless the white men who resented being enslaved and decided we're going to fight for freedom and made it possible for even the haters of white people in this country to be here. I'm not just saying this. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm telling you what's really going on because I know what the blacks was like prior to the civil rights movement. And and the civil rights movement was one of the worst things that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion. But um, I want to give you an example of these evil people who hate God, hate America, and has nothing good to offer to make it better. I can see it a little bit, but not really, but let's say I want to pretend it. If they were offering something better, but it's not in them. They don't know how. That's why they call white people white supremacy, because in their hearts and minds, they know that whites are superior to them. They know it, and they say it out loud. And I say it's not true, because if whites were superior to the blacks, they wouldn't let the blacks destroy their country. They wouldn't let them destroy something that white men came and went through hell and made happen. And so we are celebrating white history in order to remember and not to forget. Meanwhile, France is burning down. France is burning. This is from Cultural Trip. From the late 18th century to the 19th century, the city of Paris became known as the City of Light. 
Paris, did you know that? Became known as the City of Light, a center of education and ideas throughout Europe. A center of education and ideas throughout Europe. Inspiring poets, engineers, and scientists. I want you to see how France used to look. Watch this from Compilations. Remind me of how American used to look like that. Yeah, so peaceful, organized, beautiful uh, churches. We've done segments on the buildings and how yeah. they're getting uglier and uglier. But um, you know, France back in the day, seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds, even like the early nineteen hundreds, especially like nineteen twenties, it just was considered like the height of culture. You know, and America was still young. It was still like, you know, scrappy, still uh, <laughs> developing. But France was already established. Wow. It was like a place of just absolute beauty and, um, you know, a place where people appreciated life and, and beauty and, sh- and structure, social structure more than other places. Um, but as far as their appreciation for art and, and beauty, um, it's pretty much, you know, unmatched. And then this, this, you know, modern France, as you'll see in the next clip, you know, once you loose, start loosening your immigration rules, the whole country changes. So you saw what France looked like, right? How beautiful. That was amazing. Breitbart is reporting that r- rioting rages, raged in cities around France. Despite a huge police deployment with cars and buildings set ablaze and stores looted, the French government, the uh, French government is considered a nationwide state of emergency. France is fighting for the very right to call itself a civilization. Watch the comp- So we showed you what it looked like before, right? Paradise on Earth. Watch this combination of what it looked like now. Burnt out cars and debris littered the streets. The reason for the protests? The death of a 17-year-old, named only as Nail M, pulled over for supposedly breaking traffic rules. An eyewitness filmed the police performing the check. When Nail tried to pull away, the officer fired at point-blank range, killing the teenager. The officer who fired the deadly shot was taken into custody accused of voluntary manslaughter.
Et Dieu le action de Sevran. Au nom de Dieu le action de Sevran, elle a brûlé. Oh, là c'est super chaud. All in the last week or so. All in the last week? He said, how'd you like France? He said, I wouldn't go to France. I wouldn't go to France. Because France is no longer France. France is no longer France. They won't like me for saying that. <laughs> France is no longer France. Are those, those people that were, a couple of things, those people that were looting and rioting, were those Allah U Abba people or black yeah. people? Those Allah U Abba? Yeah. Really? Letting Muslims into their country, yeah. So what's wrong with white people? They prefer beauty and the best. But what's wrong with them that they allow these people to come in who are coming from countries that they couldn't run them, couldn't make happen, right? Why do the whites let this happen? You know, I, I think I have a similar answer to um, to the biblical question you know why do why are so many people committing suicide because that you know the for i don't know forever for whatever reason that order is no longer there you know the order of god that we talk about is no longer there you know the mothers get to the kids you know too early in their life and they're not able to overcome that uh imagination in their head that they start to develop as a response to that and that order never uh never fully returns so, you know, you see it go from that very just such a civilized, you know, society and to uh, to get to get demoralized. I can't tell you what the original cause of cause of that, you know, was, but. Yeah, that is, same thing happened here in America. White people built beautiful paradise on Earth and the people came from hell and just took it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's that famous quote that uh, a lot of people talk about. It goes something like, you know, s strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak yeah. men create hard times, hard times create strong men. But what uh um but yeah, I, I mean you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that strong men create good times. Right. You know, if you're really a strong man, it seems like, you know, Good times and civilized times aren't necessarily the same. Yeah, aren't necessarily the same. Thing. Good, man. good seems like such a, a shallow yeah. way to put it. But when it's when it's civilized, you know, there are definitely some people out there that wouldn't refer to that as good. But <laughs> it's uh, definitely superior. You know, that order was just there. It just seems so peaceful. You yeah, know? it was like. The music, the food. And the people just living their life, going about their day. Yeah. The business, the talents coming out. Of their, right. Uh, the towns were built for people. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Well, one, ba one based <laughs> Polish man, right. he's like, uh-uh. One monkey don't stop no show. Right. <laughs> this is from Bright Bar. Watch this, folks. The uh, Polish prime minister drew a link between France immigration policies and its social cohesion. He said he intended to continue his government's safe immigration policy and posted a social media video contrasting the summer in Polish cities to the other side of Europe. Watch this from Bit Shoot. Bit Shoot. Watch this. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
amazing. Yeah. So the prime minister in Polish, a Polish, uh, Poland said that, uh-uh, y'all yeah, ain't bring that mess over here. Yeah, he's not afraid to be called racist, you know? He's got a, he's got a white country. He's saying, we're going to keep our immigration policy, and we're not going to let certain types of people in. And he's got no problem saying that. So he put this social media post out, and um, he highlighted, you know, the reason behind all this violence in France in the first place is their immigration policy. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going the same way. Um. So France has a weak government. Uh, yeah, now they do. In ter- I mean, at least in terms of uh, immigration, they do. What a mess. So do we. Yeah, we definitely have one. Because some of you, I'm sure, miss this type of language. And some of you millennials have never heard it. And you need to hear it. And I just want to remind those who miss this type of language, who miss it. This is from Politico. In 2020, the Great White Hope, well, they didn't say Great White Hope. I'm going to say the Great White Hope. They say President Donald Trump issued a speech delivered against the backdrop of Mount Rushmore on the July, on the 4th of July, watch this from USA Today. Watch this. We gather tonight to herald the most important day in the history of nations, July 4th, 1776. It was all made possible by the courage of 56 patriots who gathered in Philadelphia 244 years ago and signed the Declaration of Independence. 1776 represented the culmination of thousands of years of Western civilization and the triumph of not only spirit, but of wisdom, philosophy, and reason. They were American giants in full flesh and blood, gallant men whose intrepid deeds unleashed the greatest leap of human advancement the world has ever known. From head to toe, George Washington represented the strength, grace, and dignity of the American people. From a small volunteer force of citizen farmers, he created the Continental Army out of nothing and rallied them to stand against the most powerful military on Earth. When defeat seemed absolutely certain. He took what remained of his forces on a daring nighttime crossing of the Delaware River. They marched through nine miles of frigid darkness, many without boots on their feet, leaving a trail of blood in the snow. In the morning, they seized victory at Trenton after forcing the surrender of the most powerful empire on the planet, General Washington did not claim power, but simply returned to Mount Vernon as a private citizen. When called upon again, he presided over the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia and was unanimously elected our first president. Americans must never lose sight of this miraculous story. We should never lose sight of it. Nobody has ever done it like we have done it. Amazing. Now, that's the type, those are, the, the, the great I hope is from the old school, by the way. And those are the type of men that were around that will remind you of the greatness, not weak beta males with mama mindsets and emotions that would tell you to tear it down. We celebrate White History Month to remind you, to remind you and introduce to those who don't even know, because a lot of young people don't even know. They have no clue. They've been taught everything but reading, writing, and arithmetic and true history of America. Anything but that. Somebody got to remind you. 